Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Yumi Chicken from Team Pandori. With the upcoming Egret 2 Mini and the Astro City Mini V, 2022 is going to be awesome for the mini cab market. The Astro City, first released in 1993, rose to critical acclaim, and in 2021, Sega shrunk down this arcade to micro size. It is chilly in here. I shall put the kettle on. This is the Astro City Mini bought from Amazon's with 37 titles. We've got the size of the cab as well as the resolution on the side here. So widescreen LCD, HDMI output, 720 and 480p. On the back, nothing much but a list of games. Over here, a few more screenshots. And on the bottom, nothing. I prefer fun bags anyway. Go Sega! Indeedy. This is for the 60th anniversary. And we can open it up to see... The bright pink and bright green. Mm. And an instruction manual. Yay. So the instruction manual just shows you the basics, really. I can tell you right now that they didn't really try. This box at the top has... Cables. Okay, we've got two cables here. HDMI, as well as a cable for the power. You'll need to provide a 2 amp USB socket. And for the main event, the Astro City Mini. Now this is very pretty. Looking around this thing, it's pretty incredible. Around the back, you can see the plate be open to get to the CRT, if it was a real cab. And on and off switch, HDMI, two USB ports, headphone, and power. We got six rubber feet, as well as the input rating of five volts at two amps. At the bottom of the box, there's this with nothing in it. Lovely. It takes this long to get to the menu. If the language has been set up already, you'll get straight into the games list. Otherwise, we can press the select button, press the second one down, and we can select from these. Japanese, English, Chinese, and something else. We also can adjust brightness, volume, screen settings, where we can add analog display, which is basically scan lines, which doesn't look too bad on this little mini. Wallpaper settings, which basically adds a bezel to the left and right. As this is a widescreen display, the bezels will fill the gap not used by the game itself. The correct aspect ratio is kept. We're going to keep with this Astro City one. At first glance, the game's menu looks pretty good. We've got the title of the game, screenshot, if there's save data available, and also other information about the game. I don't know if you noticed yet, but this list is a mess. Being in alphabetical order would have helped a lot, but right now it's in date of release. Let's see how the joystick sounds. On the whole, extremely light and clicky. Same goes for the buttons. I'm gonna rank the games between good, average, and arse.
bars. Miss. Everyone knows that arcade gaming is best with two players, and Sega do sell controllers at a premium for this machine. But with these two USB ports at the back, one for player one, one for player two, we can use different options. This is the 8-bit Do M30 with the black dongle. This is for the Sega Mega Drive Mini, but it works perfectly with the Astro City Mini 2. Even the buttons are bound correctly. If we use the Mayflash Magic NS, we can use many more options. Provided a controller works with this, it'll also work on the Astro City Mini. We'll just hook up the cheap PlayStation 3 controller, and it works fine. Or the Hori Xbox 360 Blast Blue controller. This one's wired to USB. And then hooked up to the Xbox 360 wireless dongle, here's the Tekken 6 arcade stick. We've tried the Astro City arcade stick, but unfortunately it's not compatible. We'll review this in another video. Hooking up the Astro Mini to the TV upscales very nicely. Unfortunately, on my Bravia, it cuts off the edges, and it seems like there's a bit of delay. That could be my TV though. We can also see that the scan lines look terrible through HDMI out. I have a plan. Astro City Mini, powering a full-sized Sega Net City. This time with no monitor cutoff, it looks great. We've hooked up the buttons and sticks to the fastest USB encoder known to man, the Pico Fighting Board, using the Mayflash to convert it to a compatible input. 
Now we have tight controls, tighter than a duck sauce on ice, to a fairly cheap arcade board. It's time to take a look at the pros and the cons. Coming from Sega themselves, the build quality is excellent. Outside some of the shimmering of Wonder Boy, the games play very well. We've got a nice display, TV out, and the aspect ratio is 4-3. Things we'd like to see improve are the games list. To have that in alphabetical order would be a godsend. There's currently no way to add games, and it's not been hacked yet. At the end of the day, is this worth having? Personally, I think I'll keep it on the shelf. Fingers crossed that one day a hack will be released. Anyway, I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are incredible. Thank you. We're working on these videos and on our software where we fix many issues of the Pandora Box arcade units. If you'd like to support our work, please check our Patreon out or come join us on Discord. We have a high score competition and the current game is Speed Rumbler. Come and share your sweaty hands. This has been Emu Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. I and John Luke come pump my nods. Engage.